So obviously he's a seminal and we're here like supporting him. No, we're um Kings and we just I don't I don't know what we're gonna do. We're just do. gonna have know. to put our differences aside. I don't know what else we do. I, I don't know, I we should just like throw up the U and see what he does. Yeah. Go Canes. <laughs> Wow, it's really happening. So the funny thing is, is I normally, well, sometimes not normally. So at this point, I know who like you are, like <laughs> each one of you, you know what I mean? So yeah, it's like, oh, well, yeah. like at first I would like decipher who you were by, by your earrings. You but can't you can't see, see our earrings. earrings. And I can see your earrings now. But we're wearing the same earrings today. Here we are. Oh, you're wearing the same earrings today? See, that's yeah. what I'm saying. I don't even look at it anymore. So we are here today at Connected by Water. With two of my favorite people in the whole entire world. Oh, thank right? you. Emily and Amanda Gill. So, how are we connected by water? Well, oh, there's so many ways. So many ways, right? Well, we met in the Bahamas. Yep. Like two years, two years ago. ago mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I guess so. I don't know. I'm so bad with like timelines. And it then was two years ago. It was two years ago. We met in the Bahamas and then we ended up living 30 minutes away from each other. Mm -hmm. And we're connected by water because. We like to fish and you like to fish. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the funny thing is like we start this whole show off with that question, like how are we connected by water? But more often than not, if anyone's coming on the show, it's almost like you can easily answer it. How are we not connected by water? That's probably weird, but you know, like, cause we're connected by water in so many different ways. So first of all, um, you guys are the first team members of the studio, which we're super excited about. Um, Gale Force Fishing, yeah, a full time Yay. charter business, yeah. right? Oh yeah, full time. Yep, and it's a family fun charter. Yep, right? and but for you know people that really want to fish, you know, for it's not just like you know picking goldfish out of a out of a bowl or anything. Like you guys are really fishing, but it's like catered to families. Yeah, really oh, want to yeah. get out and accomplish some good fishing. Yeah, we just found like after working for different charter boat companies that there was a need for family-oriented fishing. So mm -hmm. many captains care more about getting fish in the boat than they do the experience for the families or the kids on the boat. Obviously, we care about getting fish in the boat, too, though. Yeah, that's important. But, but we want, if it's their first snapper, we want it to be a memory, not... We mm -hmm. focus our charters on teaching and making sure that not only are you fishing, but you're learning. Like, we don't just... A lot of charters, they'll just do hook and hand. So you sit and wait and wait and wait, and then it's like, oh, I got a fish on, come reel it in. And they don't do anything. And then if they have their own boat, they don't have any... I mean, it's, they can't even go out and replicate it. Right. Whereas we make sure that you actually learn how to bait your hook, let your line out, catch whatever fish we're trying to target and reel it in. And then obviously if we get people that don't want to do that, we'll, yeah, we'll like do all the dirty work too. You know, but. if you don't want to sure. bait your hook, you don't have to. But we definitely focus on just making sure they have a good time. And we definitely slow things down for families. And I think we just like taking families out too because I think they are really fun to work with and – Usually the kids, it's like their first time, so we just want to make sure they have a good experience. It's got to be so cool. I mean, for the customer, like experience, like just because I know how I feel around you guys. Like even from like the moment I met you guys, like super comfortable. Like you guys are just two very welcoming people. Um, so I imagine that translates on the water for these families when they come in and they just have a blast with you guys. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Do you find like people like saying that to you guys all the time? Yeah, we definitely get. A lot of, like, families that their kids actually watch us on YouTube or something like that. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of fun. That And we also appreciate it because we make sure that all our videos and stuff are professional and there's no foul language or anything like that. Yeah, like our so YouTube videos, we say, okay, well, if a mom wants to let her 5-year-old watch it, can she let her 5-year-old watch it without having to look over her shoulder make sure it's clean? Right. So all of our videos were, like, family-friendly, like, perfect, not perfect, foul, not, no foul language. And mm -hmm. we always wear clothes and right. we're big on like fishing and pants and long sleeves and being sun protected not necessarily you know the other side of things well that is kind of one thing we talk about that all the time with you guys right when, yeah. when we're just talking like that's kind of like part of your whole mo yeah. yeah is that you know you guys are all just about fishing you know not about that whole you know i mean listen there's nothing wrong with you know girls that want to do that and have their profiles all like that but, but that's not you guys you right. guys you guys right. are all about you know just you know keeping everything clean it's all about the fishing it's all about good, the fun clean fun good clean fun yeah. that's what we like it's to awesome. do. yeah and i mean i guess the only thing that maybe a parent might 
care about is if the kid's sensitive to like fish dying on the screen. But other than that, <laughs> right, like right, right, there's right. nothing else. We're fishing, so yeah, we're you know, still fishing. We're yeah, gonna, yeah, yeah, right. that, yeah, it's good, clean fun. Yeah. So you guys are slashed were based out of Big Pine. Yes. Your charter. Yeah, so, so we started our company down, well, the last year we've been living full-time in the Florida Keys, and we started our company, and we started chartering last March, and we pretty much fished. Well, we started the process in, like, December, but it took so long to get paperwork yeah. and insurance to run a charter boat that we started probably booking charters in March. Yeah, and we pretty much fished full-time all summer down there, and we love it down there. It's a really great place to start a business, but we're originally from up here by Fort Lauderdale area. We so. grew up in, yeah, when, like, Weston, so mm -hmm. we have decided we're going to move our charter business up dun, here da, da, da. to Hillsborough Inlet. Out of Hillsborough Inlet is where we want to be. Um, we are looking at a boat slip tomorrow, so as long as everything runs smoothly, that is the current plan. Um, very, you know. very, very yeah. cool. Yeah, that, so I'm excited about that. We're personally. really excited. You guys are going to be holding out in my mind. Yeah, so yeah. That, that's I awesome. mean, we feel like that too. We've been part-time fishing in the Keys for like three years and like full-time, like a full calendar year as of literally this week, it'll be a full calendar year living down there full-time. And the Keys is an amazing place to learn and to fish. And there's so many different species you can catch down there, but from like a lifestyle perspective and even like a family perspective, our family's up here. And I think that Fort Lauderdale and like this whole area is a little bit more homey. Homey, yeah, that's a good yeah, word for it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a little bit probably, it's probably a better place to live day to day. Day to day, it's a better place to live. The Keys yeah. is amazing for vacations. It's a beautiful place and we're always still going to go down there, I'm sure, and fish there a lot. But mm -hmm. day to day, I think that we think this is going to be a better place for us, which is only going to help our business in the long run. Because we're like, well, what's going to help us continue to fish in the long run? Let's say 10 years down the road, where do you want to be living? Well, I would like to live near my family in Fort Lauderdale or wherever. So we're looking at Hillsborough Inlet mm -hmm. and... We're hoping, I mean, there's a slip available September 1st that we're going to look at um, tomorrow. So as long as we like the slip and everything goes well. September 1st. Yeah. Wow. It's fast. fast. I know, it's really fast. I, I wasn't expecting that at we all. Awesome. all. Yeah. Start booking your charters now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Take you out. Where do they go? Tell them. Tell everyone um, about the charters. I mean, our website is galeforcefishing.com. Um, there's a contact link there, um, which is a good place to book us. And then our social media is you can reach us that way as well, which are, we used to have personal social media accounts, but now we are creating Gale Force Twins, mm -hmm. Instagram and Facebook pages. So it's going to be at Gale Force at Twins. At Gale Force Twins. That's the new one. That's the new one. Okay. That Are you able to merge those in? Well, that's on, what we're going to try to yeah, do. So on Facebook, you can't. Well, supposedly well, you can. On Facebook, we each have a page, Captain Amanda Gale and Captain Emily Gale, and they've worked their way up to almost 10,000 followers each. Mm -hmm. And apparently there's a way to merge your Facebook pages. So first... Yeah. Uh, Justin, yeah. talk talk to Justin about yeah. that because he's right next door. I'm, I'm yeah. sure he's going to want to tell you. Yeah. So like, make sure you guys do that the right way. We're in the middle of trying to merge the pages to Gale Force Twins, mm -hmm. which but Facebook has to approve of all your Facebook Steps, page like, merges. Yeah. I don't know why. It's just tell him to call me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give him a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's the goal is to be Gale Force Twins, and if not, we're probably just going to start a new page at Gale Force Twins mm -hmm. or our website galeforcefishing dot com. Okay. Cool. Yeah. And then you'll have your bio up on our new site too. Yep. So you know, anyone can also reach you yeah. through there if they can't yeah. find you elsewhere, which I don't see it being a problem yeah. finding you elsewhere. But cool. So you guys fished here this weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So with, with Mark? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We, Captain Mark Daddario. Uh, yeah. We fished in a tournament. Mm -hmm. a all-ladies tournament, and Emily was basically the captain all day. She ran the boat. Yeah, I did. You did? Yeah. Yeah, nice. Yeah, the night before, Mark had texted Are us. Are you on the CV or the Viking? The CV. The okay. 39 CV, yeah. The night before, he was like, I think I'm going to have one of the girls from the boat, and the guys will basically work work the pit. And I was just sitting next to him, and he's like, okay, here, drive it. I'm going to mm -hmm. go help out and mate. I'm like, okay. <laughs> How did yeah. you guys like fishing with Mark? It was nice. He's a yeah, cool guy. Good. Yeah. Yeah. He really is. Nice guy. Yeah. 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 He's, He's very been laid back and he doesn't yell. Some, right. A lot of captains yell and that's mm -hmm. like a, we don't appreciate that at all. Yeah. Mark's got a different so. perspective on things, which I love. Yeah. About yeah. Him. yeah. I think that's definitely been helpful for us to want to bring our business up here. It's like, okay, there's good people here too, you know? Yeah. For No, yeah, for sure. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's Pompano's home to me, so... 
I yeah. love it. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, yeah, you're going to get your, you're going to get your pockets of people. Oh yeah. There, so yeah. just, we'll try to help you navigate those waters when you first start coming in. But you know, I think you guys will be fine. Yeah. You, you've always been able to take care of yourselves. So it's cool. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. We caught, um, the fishing was really slow. Fishing was really slow. Yeah. So, so slow. but something special happened, yes. right? Yes. Um, Dakota was our junior angler and she mm-hmm. was able to get top junior angler. Awesome. She caught, she caught I think it was an almost six pound bonita, which is what got her top. It was 5.6, 5.6 pounds, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And but then she also caught her first sailfish. So that was what the big deal was. That caught. was the thing. Yeah. She that, was really that's cool. excited. She was super excited about that. And it was kind of cool just to be there. And How old is she? She's 14. Very cool. And at the end of the day, we threw her in the water off the dock. There you go. Yeah. So, I mean, us personally had the honors of doing that. I was that. wondering. I was yeah. going to ask you if you yeah. did that because they were I didn't like, see any pictures of that. They were like, the twins have to throw her in the water. And we were like, all right. So we grabbed her by her ankles and her feet and we Just swung, swung her, her like back and forth three times and then threw her in. Awesome. Yeah. And we're um, actually going to try to make a video, a YouTube video on that on That's the day cool. and on her sailfish. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. We always, you guys took video of it? Yeah. We videotaped oh, the whole well, day. Let's roll that. We'll roll that as we're talking. Yeah. Later. Oh. Yes, for sure. Yeah. And, Very cool. um, I haven't even had time to go back and look at the footage, but in the water, yeah, very yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. So I think it was really cool, like when I saw um, when I woke up this morning and I saw your uh, Instagram story about what you guys said. It was really cool. It was an honor to fish with you. You, you sent oh. that message. You when you sent yeah. that message to her, I yeah. bet you when she saw that, that made her feel really, really good. Yeah. You know, and that's kind of indicative of who you guys are. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's one of the things we love about your character and. You know, that's to say that, you know, that because I'm sure it was her honor to really fish with you guys, you know, at the end of the day. But for you guys to say that back to her, that was really, yeah. really cool. Yeah, I, I, I thought of course. That was a cool I mean, thing to, to be a part of anyone's first sailfish is a big deal. For sure. You know? Yeah, like I literally get goosebumps when kids actually say things like that. So, yeah, it's really, it was, it's really it was nice to get to know her that day. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm so excited you guys are coming up here. Yeah, we that's are really too. Cool. Yeah. We got our... um Cats are here now. You're, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's official once the cats arrive. The cats are here. Oh, my God. Speaking of cats. So, all right. Did you Do you know about Mango? I heard about yes. it. You heard about Mango? Yes. All right, so. But I, I, I thought last I heard he was alive. Yeah, no. <laughs> Mango is no longer with us. Um, so this bird flew on my truck this weekend. Yeah. So the kids are in the pool, right? And I come inside to get a beer. And out of the corner of my eye, I see something yellow out of the front window. I'm like, what is that on my truck? I have a black truck, so, like, the yellow really, like, stuck out. And I'm like, is that a bird? There's a little parakeet. It landed on my truck, and it just wouldn't leave. And I'm like, all right, well, maybe I should just take this thing inside. And I told the kids, oh, there's a bird here. Once you tell my kids anything, they want to keep everything. Like, they're just like, can we get it? Can we get it? You know? Yeah. And I'm like... And Liz is like rolling her eyes and she's like, oh, it's a sign. Well, we got to keep this bird and everything like that. I'm like, all right, let's roll up to Pet Supermarket. $118 later. (laughs) We're buying like the cage and like all the supplies and the food and everything like that. We get home, we put this thing in the cage and it's just not looking good at this point. I mean, we just thought at first it was just tired from its long journey or wherever the heck it came from. And um, all of a sudden this just goes like, <laughs> this like down on the face first in the cage and I'm like oh no and the kid's like oh he's just sleeping oh he's just sleeping I'm like oh, that <laughs> I don't know they yeah. that way yeah I don't know if that looks normal <laughs> so like they're like kind of I'm like stop touching the bird right they're like trying to like pick the bird up and like move it like hey you like know? the Nemo like, chill you're gonna stress the bird out and you're really gonna kill it but I think the bird was kind of like already on its way out yeah and then, so I put Star Wars on the TV. I'm like, Sean, just, you know, watch Darth Vader for a little bit. And he's just like, you know. And so we're watching Star Wars for like half an hour. And all of a sudden I hear Sean go, um, dad. And he reaches in the cage and he pulls a bird out. And he goes, and just like looks at me like matter of fact. And he's like, it's dead. <laughs> I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now do they want another one? Now they want another one. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, yeah. I'm like on the fence like. Should I th- take this thing back to like the store, or, like the cage? Did you and... like bury the bird? 
Uh, the bird's no longer with us. Okay. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. No, we didn't have a ceremony or anything yeah. like that. It's like we weren't that attached to it. Like we, we only had it for like two hours. That's but. true. We had a we, hamster that died. We had three hamsters as kids growing up. And one of them died, and well, they all died eventually, but one of them died, and we buried him in the backyard when we were kids. You know, we had a whole ceremony, and then um, we, had, <laughs> we used to have dogs, and I think like it was like a year was like or two a, later. Like it wasn't a year. It was like several months. It was obviously sometime com- after the hamster had completely decomposed. We found hamster bones buried <laughs> up or dug up in the yard really? from the dogs. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Feel so full, full disclosure. Full disclosure. Oh. <laughs> I put this bird in an old one of my old old kind of shoe boxes and threw them, wrapped it in a public bag and just yeah, that's probably in the garbage. Fine too. Yeah. yeah. The garbage came this morning, so <laughs> yeah. it's officially over. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. So cool. So uh, speaking of way back, how long have you guys been fishing? Well, I mean, I mean, like, when, like yeah, like, like, what's the whole like history way, of this here? Because I know you guys, yeah, which we'll get to in a little bit. I mean, you guys ran track or pole vault and stuff like University of Miami, which is awesome. Um, you guys have degrees in microbiology, which is super impressive. Fishing, it probably so to explain that to me. Like, how yeah. did this all start with you guys? It started as our family would just vacation to Isla Morada. Every summer we would rent a house and we used to have like a deck boat, you know, we had no fishing abilities, abilities on it at all. And the two <laughs> <laughs> our family was just into like, we would do sandbar, snorkeling, Explore. like island hopping, like that yeah. kind of thing. And obviously we just loved it. And, but no one in the family really fished. And um, I don't know, we must have seen people fishing off the dock or something at yeah. the houses we would stay at. And um, we started fishing off the dock together and we were 10 years old ish. we literally went to that bass pro and i lamrata mm-hmm. the wide world, wide world. yeah where the where the hemingway boat is yeah 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 and i guess i, mean, I don't even remember this our dad bought us some pen combo like rod some and kind of combo or something and, um, and then we bought dead shrimp dead and shrimp and we would just fish for snapper off the dock i mean everything was little we never kept anything I mean, that's none it, of us knew. Really right, but that's pretty much how it started. So I yeah, I mean, there's like pictures that because I was thinking to myself, I was like, my dad, our dad doesn't fish. I'm like, I, I don't even remember who was like, who tied the knots. Who's tying the knots? And then there's a picture of my dad like tying some kind of knot. I don't know. It was probably <laughs> like an overhand knot. Like, yeah. I don't even know what it was. Like you know, know. They say yeah. like, if you can't tie a knot, tie a lot. Yeah, so right. I guess that's how it started. And then for our 13th birthday, um, usually for our birthdays when we were kids growing up, we were never really into birthday parties. We always kind of took trips or like we'd like my parents would be like, well, we can go to Disney or you can have a party. You got to pick one. And mm-hmm. for our 13th birthday, we wanted to go to the Keys um, and we wanted to go deep sea fishing. And we li- literally didn't even know what that meant. We were like, you know, you just see the signs when you're driving. Warms my heart, it's like yeah. deep sea fishing. Like, That's what I want to do. Yeah. And we told our mom, we, we told her that we wanted to go, but we wanted to learn. We didn't want to just go on a boat and get handed the fish, basically. Right. So our mom emailed a bunch of captains at the Which wheel. is kind of like yeah. how you guys are even to this day. Yeah. With everything you do. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, don't, don't. Don't do it yeah, for me. Yeah. Like, tell me what me. you want me to do. Show me. And I'll I need duplicate to learn. it. Yeah. 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 It's awesome. Yeah. That's what I tell, like, mates on the boat sometimes. Like, if I'm fishing, they'll be like, well, I hate, like, someone takes the rod out of my hand. I, I take it back. I go, don't take it out of my hand. Just tell me what you want me to do. If this were a tournament, you can't touch the rod. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. It's good. But um, our mom, you know, Wahoo's the restaurant in Isla Mirada. Mm-hmm. Our mom emailed all the cap- bunch of captains that were there saying that it was our daughter's birthdays and they wanted to learn how to fish. And one of the captains in particular said, tell them happy birthday. And I think for her, that was a, like she liked that he was attentive to the fact that it was a trip for us. Mm-hmm. And we went with him. It was Captain Robert on the, the Restless Tyus, too. Yeah. yeah. And we actually still we no, still, no. We're still in today. touch with him today. And it was something funny, too. Yeah. yeah. That's who I fished with um, on my bachelor party. Oh, no way. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, my so, gosh. So we went, um, that's what uh, all the guys are like, oh, what do you want to do? And my best friend, Mike, he was getting married, like, right around the same time. So we kind of celebrated our bachelor yeah. party together. And they're like, well, what do you guys want to do trip club? Like, all this other stuff. And we're like, well, actually, we just I'd rather just do, like, a fishing trip with all my friends yeah. and just have a great time, yeah. great weekend with the boys. You know what I mean? And so that's what we did. And we went down right there. We stayed at the Islander and we just chartered out a few boats because we had like 20 guys, you know, with us. And yeah. uh, we, it was, um, it was him and there was one other boat. I fished on that, on the Relentless too, with, but a couple other guys fished on a different boat. Yeah. And so I couldn't really remember the, the name of the other boat, but yeah. Yeah. So we've, yeah, it we was. We caught a bunch of blackfin that day. It was a really nice. great, yeah, fun day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah all we, went, home. we went yellowtailing on that day. And um, I don't know, I think every year after that we would fish with him. Mm-hmm. Just for a few years, yeah. 
And then we just continued to be in the Keys a lot. And then there was a charter boat captain out of Key West that right. we, we got were to in know. college. And he, we actually just, the two of us just went fishing um, as like a charter with him. And he was like, hey, if you're not doing anything this summer, you can work for me. And mm-hmm. we didn't really think much of it. I didn't even, I didn't even like, we didn't really hesitate. Play. I was, I was like, like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, that yes. sounds good. Nice. You know, at the time we were pre med in college, and my first thought was, yeah, let's spend the summer fishing, not, pre-med, oh, let's go work let's at the hospital. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> Um, that's kind of where we started the job, like actually working on the charter boats was in Key West. And then from there it went to, uh, working for Skip Smith for mm-hmm. Skip's tournaments in the Bahamas. And that's where we met. That's where we met. And yeah. then we got a job in Marathon on a charter boat. And then eventually we said we're on our own. And I guess it's been a long process, but. Well, not really. I mean, it seems like I mean, forever, but I mean, geez, you guys are only 24 years old. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and I mean, a lot, of, it's, it's a actually lot been incredibly in a fast. short period of time, yeah. you know, really, the way short, you guys have accomplished. In a short period of time, I look back, I'm like, to think like how much I know now compared to how much I knew a year ago or how much I knew two years ago, it's mm-hmm. scary to think about how much I didn't know when I started. Yeah. And now I'm like, wow, you know, which makes me think, I'm like, well, what do I not know now that a year from now I'm be like, wow. <laughs> I think that about my. I like think that portfolio about, of my paintings. It's like I'll look back at some of the old paintings. I'm like, oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I want to redo that one. Yeah, but you can't. You just got to do. Yeah, ones. like I look at our old yeah. YouTube videos, like our early YouTube videos. I'm like, yeah, that was awkward. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, but, but you it's know, part of it. So. Yeah, and sometimes it's helpful to look back. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know what I mean, and yeah. you just give yourself some perspective as to where you are now. You know, it's just just like that, or just like an art, and then you can't worry about you know what was. You just got to worry about what is and what's going to be. That's it. Yeah. It's yeah, true. For sure. So it's a very short period of time, though, but you guys have accomplished so much. Yeah. Like, seriously, I mean. Yeah. It kind of feels like overnight it's, like, just right. gone quickly. So it's what, gone by right? so fast. Like, so what? But it's, it's important to keep the perspective of, you know, your goals and, you yeah. know, keep everything kind of in line with what you want to achieve and right. not get too lost in the whole. Like we talked about this at ICAST. Right, we were all at ICAST, yeah. but I mean, you know, obviously this episode's previously recorded, but you know, we were at ICAST, what, two weeks ago? I think it was. Two weeks was ago, yeah. 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 And, um, you know, this, it, I mean, it's no secret, you guys are just phenomenal. Thank right? you. And there's going to be you know, one of, a lot of people that are going to want to be a part of that or take a part of that from you. Yeah. All right, so I wanted to talk, too, about um, your history as student athletes yeah right yes yeah definitely. which is, i think is like such a cool part of your story um you guys both pole vaulted at the university of miami or right, when it was yes. all said and done yeah, yeah. right yeah but it goes back your journey with pole vaulting kind of goes back a little bit further than that yeah how did you guys get into that oh this is an interesting well, story it actually so our freshman year of high school we well, well i'll just start with we grew up as gymnast yes and then we got to high school and decided to try cheerleading okay okay freshman year high school we we're like oh well, let's do cheerleading yes and we actually we really liked it yeah, it was fun and then because our dad was a runner we knew that in the spring we were going to join the track team but there was a girl kind of running did he, do? he did marathon running marathon yes so okay. he did so half he marathons was like, and marathons and we used to run with him around our neighborhood together as kids yeah he was a distance guy though okay and has had one hip replaced and now needs the other replaced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah he but wore it away so much. That was a genetic thing, I guess, that the men have in our family. Like their hips aren't shaped perfectly, perfectly circular. circular or something. So over time, it's like wearing the cartilage away. And so this has happened to other men this hap- in your family? All of yeah. his younger brothers have already had both hips replaced. Come on. Yeah. yeah like like it's like the fact that he only had one, it, he's actually doing better than his, than his brothers. Siblings, yeah. Really? But it's yeah. only. In the male gene, and now they say that, um, like, if we were to have boys, you basically just get an X-ray of their hips when they're a kid, and they can see if if their hip is shaped weird, and you do a preventative surgery. Oh, okay. Yeah, that doesn't happen to my kids like, though. No, you know? it's half the battle. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah. So since our dad was a marathon runner, we knew we were going to do track. And, and your hips are perfectly fine. So yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, yes. had, our, we, we had we had we had X-rays yeah. and everything to make sure okay. we, we had yeah. healthy hips. But there was a girl on the cheerleading team that she pole vaulted, and we, being gymnasts and kind of adrenaline junkie type we're kids, that we love doing fun things, and we were like, oh my goodness, I want to try that. That looks so cool. 
And she literally goes to us. She says, you it's know, really hard. You probably can't do it. Yeah. That's what she said to us. Like, the dead wrong serious. thing to say to the two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we were like, um, okay. Yeah. And Whatever. Then, and then the first day of track, we go straight to the pole vaulting coach. Like, I want to do, I want to be a pole vaulter. And he was like, all right, well just, you know, start like running and start training and we'll see. Cause like they don't start pole vaulting the first day, you know, first they got to weed out the kids that, you know, first you have to go through a right, tryout process, right. Yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we started out as distance runners because that's what our dad did. So it was natural. But then the um, middle it, distance yeah. coach was like, oh, you should come train with me. So we started trying middle distance. And then after being there, the sprints coach was like, you should train with me. And, you know, we kind of worked our way down to sprints and. Are you, you guys know, really fast? Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I guess for a white girl. <laughs> <laughs> What's your but, 40 time? Oh, oh, I don't know. There is no, no 40. Way. Time of 40. You don't time of 40. No. no. Well. That's a good, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm sure but basically I'm sure done we it. did, I mean, in we, high school, we were extremely competitive we in sprinting were sprinting. and hurdles. We ran okay. 100 hurdles, 300 hurdles. We ran four the by four one, by one. And sometimes and four sometimes by four. four by four. So we did all sprints events. Yes. Okay. In and college, we got strictly recruited for pole vaulting. Mm -hmm. but, so we, but we were very competitive as sprinters in high school as well. Like our four by one one we placed at states we got and third then at states thir we got third yeah yeah and then um the team our junior year of high school won the state meet as well and then um so what i'm confused yeah. so the four, what's four by four four by one okay so four four yeah okay so the four like, by yeah, yeah, as i'm saying this i'm like wait so i don't a track is 400 meters in an oval okay okay and each so there's two straights and then there's Two, two curves. curves. Nobody told me I'd have to do math today, okay. but that's cool. So four by one means four people run 100 meters. Yes. Okay. So it's a four by 100 meter relay. Gotcha, so I ran gotcha, the right. first curve, and then we had another girl run the first straight. And then, and then she I ran, ran the second curve, and then another girl ran the last leg is what we called it. Legs. Okay. So she right. was first leg, and then we had a girl named Ebony on the second leg, and then we were on the third leg, and then I think Taylor ran last Fourth leg. leg. Okay. Yeah. And, and this was... This is freshman year? Of this was actually, I, at this point, it was now, well, now we're talking about our junior year. But, yeah, we started off. Sorry, so in high school, you did more than just the yeah, pole vaulting. Yeah, in okay. high school, we pole vaulted, we ran sprints, and we um, did hurdles. hurdled. Mm -hmm. But with pole vaulting, we started off our freshman year pole vaulting, and we were both. Um, not good. Not really bad at all. Well, Horrible. I wasn't really bad. So I, you're supposed to jump <laughs> off. <laughs> so, I was better than you. I just want to make that clear. She that was better. I was better. Really, yes. Okay. So you're supposed to jump off of your left foot if you're a righty. Okay. I literally like you lead with your right knee. Yes. Okay. You drive. I feel like I need to like have draw, a, we like, should a have a video and like playing. Yeah. Well, we can roll some yeah. video. Yeah. We'll show you some pole vaulting videos. Uh, yeah, for sure. So, but I was literally jumping off two feet. That's how messed up I was. And <laughs> <laughs> messed up. It was <laughs> the uncoordinated. But I was really coordinated. I don't know. I just couldn't figure it out. And the coach literally goes to me, this isn't your thing. Maybe you should pick something else. And I was very upset. Like, I think I went home crying. And But our freshman year, we went to the state meet to watch all the other competitors and see, you know, what we could look forward to. And we saw a whole bunch of people in the stands wearing Pole Vault City shirts. And we went home. We told our mom, what's Pole Vault City? We have to go figure this out. It's basically this guy up in Melbourne, Florida, a Pole Vault coach that he's also a teacher, and he runs camps, like summer-long camps and weekend camps. And since there were so many kids there wearing pole vault city shirts, pole vaulting, we figured this is the guy we have to go to. Mm -hmm. Well, and not just that, but all of his athletes were competing in the state meet. Yeah. So, oh, so they, the, they were all he very. He had street cred. Oh, yeah. 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 We were like, well, all the pole vault city kids are here. Like, right. I want to be here. Right. So it's basically a club team. It's and like Cobra Kai, like yeah. Karate Kid. Yeah. Or am I talking? I don't think I've seen I, that. But did I just age my. Wow. <laughs> well, no, but we don't watch movies. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. We'll, just, we'll, we'll keep just it, blame at that. it on that. <laughs> um, John, what did I just do to myself right there? <laughs> you, you showed how yeah, old you are. Yeah. And me too. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess we started training with Bobby. He was co Coach Bobby Heck with Pole Vault City. And he took her from 8, 6 to 12 feet in literally like three months. Like Really? It was maybe like six months. Maybe six. Whatever. Really which is fast. a I huge ended, gap if you know yeah, what I mean. I ended my freshman year jumping 8, 6, and I jumped 12 feet my sophomore year, and I won the state meet. And I was I went into it complete underdog. Mm -hmm. And that was a really cool experience. And then following... So states, you won states. Yes, sophomore you won the state. Year. Yeah, I won the state meet my sophomore Congratulations. year. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and then, then I also won my junior year. And, and then, then I won. 
senior year. Yes. But junior year was really cool because she got wow. first and she got and I got second. So Gale and, yeah. Force. Yeah. yeah, that's where it started. Yeah. That's where it started. That's yeah. where Gale Force Twins started. One of the weightlifting coaches at our high school was called like, us Gale Force hey, it's Twins. The Gale Force Twins, and I was like, "What's a Gale Force?" I literally said, I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, you know, it kind of started there, but we didn't really start branding it until we started fishing. Yeah, but um, that junior year, me winning states and her winning second or getting second was probably my favorite memory of high school we had together. Because you yeah. got first? I, yeah, I got yeah. first, she got second. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> because we both stood on the podium together. together. And then yeah. um, the team, the high school team won that year too. Yeah. So we got rings. So cool. Yeah. And then we also competed nationally in high school. Yeah, like just we national all the meets national meets and everything. So, so pole vaulting was our lives for a long you time. You had like colleges like yeah, yeah knocking yeah. on your door. Yeah, yeah, like anywhere we could have gone, gone we probably could have gone. But you chose Louisiana. Yes. yes. Why? So pole vaulting is a very specific sport. So just because it's a good track school or a good sports school doesn't mean that you should go to it. Okay. So there was a coach. I was curious about why you chose yeah. to go there. Yeah. First. Yeah. It's kind of like. You just have to find a coach that knows pole vaulting. Right. And okay. there's different just styles to pole vaulting. And there was a coach in Louisiana that kind of coached the same way our club coach did. He had the same style. Yeah. The right. same so, coaching style. So pole vault city style. Pole yeah. vault city style right. coaching. So um, that's why we chose Louisiana. Louisiana. It was University of Louisiana at Lafayette. The Raging Cajuns. Cajun. Raging Cajuns. Cajun. Raging Cajuns. Cajun. Yeah. And I like it. We actually loved it there. Um, we love the academics. They had, a, they had like the best chemistry program. We were pre-med, best biology program. I mean, the best teachers. Every professor that was there was there because they wanted to teach, not because they were doing research and how to do it on the side. That's That was what they were there for. They were there yeah. to be professors. And, but I think after two years of running track there, I don't know, we just kind of started to think about our futures. We were like, well, I don't know if I want to run track. You know, um, I might just want to focus on school. Well, it's probably not a huge feature in Pole vaulting. Pole vaulting. It's right. tough. You know, and I mean, pole vaulters actually peak in their late 20s, early 30s. Yeah. So, so it's like it's a, a commitment long. if we wanted to do it. You would so have you to guys would really have to be doing it on like the international stage. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. I mean, there's like. make a living at it. Yeah. You want to be like competing on an Olympic level. Yeah. To make, make a living. Money. That's how you do it. And I mean. You guys could have done if you probably would have. Yeah. Athletes do. It. Usually are, like if you don't get to that point at the end of your college career, you can go to like an Olympic training center and start working towards that. Yeah. You yeah. have I mean, to apply and get accepted. But we considered we it. We looked into it. But okay. I think we were just kind of like doing so well in school that we were like, you know, let's focus on school. So. Well, let's. Okay. So we were in Louisiana. How did you like Louisiana? I, we really I liked it. No, we really liked it. Yeah. Everyone's very nice there. Well, we had a really good friend group. Yeah. It's a okay. southern state. Right. For sure. So, and that was very different from down in South Florida. Where is Lafayette? It's um, like an hour and a half from New Orleans. So it's like an hour and a half is west end. Is it is it's it on like, the coast of the Gulf or is it? No, it's, it's like two inland. hours inland. It's like New Orleans. And then if you go west, I'm pretty sure it's Lafayette. And then if you go northeast, it was like Baton Rouge. Okay. Because I'm pretty sure that we made a triangle. Yeah. Yeah. So you were saying. With yeah. So then we were just getting all these internship opportunities through our degree in Louisiana, but we both knew that when we graduated college, we wanted to be in Florida mm -hmm. because we wanted to be, we follow landlocked, even though we love the state. And so we just, she actually, on a whim, I was like, well, if I know when I graduate, I want to be in South Florida, I should probably be getting my education here so that I'm starting to network down here. Right. Mm -hmm. So we literally just picked UM because it was, the it was closest, closest to home. Ho school to home that was a good school yeah. academically. Mm -hmm. And we applied after two weeks, after, two two weeks after every deadline. Like we were just like, I'm just gonna apply. I called the school. I'm like, I know all the deadlines have passed. Is it too late? And they were like, You can apply, but you know, no we'll guarantees. see. No guarantees. We're like, Okay. So we applied, and then um, I remember being on campus in Louisiana, like after final exams, walking, and I got an email from UM, and it was we like, stopped and like we've been no. We, I remember we stopped at a picnic table, like yeah. a green picnic table. Remember this? Yeah. And we pulled our phones. We clicked the button at the same time, and it was like, You've been accepted. And so then we went to UM. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 So was originally academics for academics, not yeah. for we had we were able to get the most scholarship a transfer, transfer could student. get yeah. academically. Yes. OK. So that was what so we was all for. this contingent on you pole vaulting at no. UM? We actually got into no. UM completely had academically. Nothing to do with it. Yeah. yeah. At the time, like we were like, I'm done. I didn't even contact a coach. Wow. Yeah. We just applied for school and then we get there. Leap. And 
Yeah. yeah. Completely. Yeah. Complete. Yeah. Like our lives changed Blind overnight. Faith, like like wow. we had to go look it's for impressive. somewhere to live. Like we I, had yeah. to find an apartment. I, mean, I never even been on campus. I never even saw the campus. We just had to put a deposit down and say we're going. Like <laughs> it was really fast. It's kind of how you guys roll though. Yeah. I feel like Isn't that's what's happening right now with our charter business. That's what I mean. Yeah. It's like every everything I know I know about you guys yeah. is like, like pretty on, much like Yeah. Like don't good. ever tell the Gale Force that they can't do anything. Yeah. Because we'll prove you wrong. Pretty yeah. much. Pretty much. I mean it's it's like I your strongest quality. Thank I you. Think that, 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 that you guys, which is why I, I know with your business that I'm not concerned by any means that you guys are going to make the right decision or whatever. Cause no matter what decision you guys make is going to be the right decision. Cause that's going to be the decision that you guys want. Yeah. You know, and that's important to understand about you guys. Like, you know, there may be other decisions in your lives that you could have made. And I'm certain you would have been successful in every one of those decisions. Like there's no right or wrong in your life. There's just what you want to do. And Thank I love you. that. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. So you're in Miami. Yeah, yeah. So we were there for like two months and just doing school and trying to be like, you know, normal students thinking that that's what we wanted. And we, got bored we just really got fast. bored. We were like, you know, let's just, let's just contact the coach. Like this is boring. So we walked into the coach's office because the coaches didn't put their emails online. Like it was hard to get a hold right. of them. But also since we didn't, since we applied to Miami academically, we never end, like officially ended our contract with Louisiana. I never signed a release form from Louisiana so, athletically. Like to this day? No, well, no, I, I know we did. We oh, had okay. the time. Yeah. At the so time, the Miami coaches couldn't reach out to us, even though they knew we were there, because I never signed a release form. Because oh, I was like, like NCAA oh, rules. And yeah. All. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So gotcha. we walk in. So we had to make the first. We had to make the first move, yeah. and we had to get our release forms. But we then, walk into the office, and the coach at Miami was like, "I've been I've, expecting you." <laughs> Really? Yeah. yeah. He's wow, like, oh, I saw cool. you were transferring. I'm glad you came. And um, I guess that's kind of really just how it started. How it started with there. training yeah. at Miami. Mm-hmm. And um, we had to go through a little bit of a process. We had to a red shirt our first indoor, indoor season. season. Yeah. Okay. And being back in Miami, um, I mean, we really like their athletic program is phenomenal. Oh, yes. Well, it's, I mean, it's Uni- University of Miami. It's one yeah. of the premier athletic programs it in the was nation. I mean, night and day difference to Louisiana. Mm-hmm. We had 6 a.m. weights three times a week, and then we had afternoon practice six days a week. So we had like... It was very regimented, and we thrive under routine completely. Mm-hmm. So we knew where we had to be, when we had to so be it was there. So good marriage, good synergy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, it was just a really good place for us to succeed. And then being back in South Florida, it allowed us to train at Pole Vault City right. in the summertime. So kind of gave us like that chance to get back with um, Bobby, Bobby Hack, our coach there. So that it really just helped us. I mean, he's just it was just the right call. And everything yeah. just kind of fell into place. Like we obviously didn't plan on pole vaulting there. And then we, we did. And then improving and we improved drastically. And um uh, what happened next? <laughs> well, how did you guys do that? Oh, well, I mean, oh, we did really good. Yeah. yeah. yeah so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what's the result yeah. of all this? Um, you know, it's not cool and everything to put right. their uniform on, but how'd it go? So uh, the team won indoor ACC conference three years in a row. Um, well, we were, we there. were there two of the years. So we were there the first and second year and then the third year I'd graduated. And then, um, at indoor conference, my senior year, I was able to medal and get on the podium so at the ACC level, that's pretty, I mean, I was really, really happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you qualified for regionals Very for nice. outdoor. Yeah, I, I didn't compete the last outdoor season. Okay. Because I had a back injury. Yeah. So I qualified for regionals, which is basically you split the United States up in half and there's the East and the West region and it's top. 48. I, I want to say 48. Top 48 in the region. In the whole region. So it's just, it, you don't have to do that at one meet. It's what you've jumped throughout the season. season. So she qualified for okay. regionals, yeah. but and actually I was... That was my goal was to qualify for regionals. And then at regionals, if you're top, I believe 25, you go to nationals. You go to nationals. I don't remember the exact numbers, but so that was my goal. But then as is going into my senior year, I started to kind of, again, just look at my life and I kind of felt like it was time to move on and, so and on a high note. Not to go to regionals. So I chose not to go. Chose not to go. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of crazy. I know. The coaches in the were moment, the coaches were like, what? How could you and not finish something? She was it was like, right. it was, it right was the right decision for Because everybody. I actually had the job on the charter boat in Key West waiting for me. So I would have done. So the sea yes. called yeah. you. Yes. So I would have. Literally, yeah. the sea called you. Because regionals was I bl- almost like a month after yeah. 
And yeah, this, the I could have been working in the key. Uh, I'm sure track a lot of season. things like, you know, the future of this, what you're going to do with it yeah. played in the part of that yeah. decision. I mean, is it yeah. worth it now at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the college track season goes like all the way through June. It's extremely long. Yeah. Like wow. you're spending and your you start summer. in January. And, and we you're started. training all fall. Wow. So I think that was really a good call for us. But we did get rings. We got um, indoor ACC rings. Yeah. Cool. That's yeah. Cool. I didn't That's bring them. I know I should. That's all right. <laughs> we'll roll some photos in, in the yeah. edit. Yeah. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, and then So then so then you went right into fishing. Well, fishing. Fishing. Yeah. And like I think immediately right after yeah, like graduate. immediately. And I think that's actually why we took to it so quickly because right. being college athletes and training and being so busy all the time, all of a sudden we have this huge gap of time to fill and mm-hmm. not just regular time, but it's like Time that we spent, you could say, being adrenaline junkies and being active and, and busy. dedicated. Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah. doing that for a living, you know, chartering, it's, you know, it's a lot of time yeah. goes into it that so, people don't see. Yeah. I think, I think they the, call it the vacuum effect in life. When yeah. what, something, something leaves a void, and something else fills something it up. Else fills mm-hmm. it, and fishing just filled it so fast to the point where, like, I remember looking back one day being like, wait, is this what I want to do? <laughs> yeah. 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 And then now we're here. Happy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We're, like, really happy to be moving our charter business, too. I think being in the Keys was getting slow. I mean, not charter-wise, but just lifestyle-wise. Yeah. 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 I'm sure, you, I mean, I grew up down here, too, you know, and spent a ton of time in the Keys all the way ever since I was a little kid. So I know exactly what you're talking about, how it just can, like, overtake you and, like, just suck you into that I think being in the Keys, bubble. we almost yeah. felt isolated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just because there's not really a young social crowd there. Mm-hmm. Um, or if there is, a lot of the fishermen just go to bars and drink and then get salty, up the next day. Salty and critters. Very, all yeah, yeah, salty. Yeah. And I think yeah. that we're just, we were kind of thinking, well, you know, I want to get married one day. Like, I want to meet somebody one day. <laughs> Ain't and no like, husband here. Like, I don't think I'm going to find him here. So <laughs> we were like, let's, uh, let's go back. And, you know, we grew up, basically yeah. went to high school in Fort Lauderdale and, have a good social circle here and we felt like it was a healthy personal decision to make and we we're like well if my personal life is healthy my business will succeed right that's yeah. kind of our business was doing good but our personal lives were kind of mm-hmm. suffering because of it so sure we, i know that's how that goes making the move. Yeah, yeah for sure i mean i mean as a business owner i mean you can really you gotta watch it you know yeah. what i mean because you can like the, i can work around the clock yeah, if, so, I, want, yeah, if, I, if I wanted to, It'll like I could never stop. If, if I, there's always like, something to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's like you know, this really. Sometimes when I get home from work, me, you know, you know, to two kids at home and yeah. you know Liz and stuff like that. And, you know, there's days I get home and I'm like, my brain is just still ripping off. Yeah. You know, whether well, it's creativity or just answering emails in my head. Yeah. You know, oh whatever. yeah. And like you know, Sean wants to just yeah. tackle me and you know and whatever, and I'm just like, no, you got to really just punch yourself in the forehead and yeah. shut that light off, you know, because yeah. you're home. Yeah, well, and we find yeah. that we because we live together, yeah. like, we'll be done working for the day, and then all the way till bedtime, we're, like, talking, talking about, about business. Oh, I thought of this idea. I had this idea. Don't forget we have to do this. Can you add that to our to-do right. list? And it got to the point where, actually, this week, we came up with a new rule that um, after a certain time, we're going to cut it off, and we're not going to talk about business. And yeah. we have yeah. a sheet of paper in the kitchen mm-hmm. right now that if I have a thought that I need to talk about, I go write it down, and we and talk the, about it next morning. So yeah, that, that's good. We started because you know, Liz yeah. and I need to do that too. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, a lot of people don't see you know how much yeah. she actually does. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. in, in the studio, oh, yeah. so it's like you know we got Vandy and Jenny over there in the other room too. But you know, Liz is really, you know, she's coming up with ideas all the time and like doing a lot of legwork on the site with yeah. Justin and stuff yeah. like that. And she's always like, well, "What do you think about this? What do you think about that?" And then she doesn't get to really talk to me about it all day long because she's got she's, right. she's shuffling the kids, yeah, and the studio at the same time during the course of the day. You know, where it's like sometimes she'll be like, hey, what about this at like 1030 at night? And I'm like, yeah. What, well, yeah, what about that tomorrow? Right. Yeah. Well, I'm done. Yeah. yeah, we agree. We've come up with this term with our mom. She's our momager. So yes. it's your mom nice. and your manager. Yes. And she's just helped us a lot with our business. Just with like, like, what do I do? I have this person contact me and that person. And just, you know, it's she's definitely helped us with. Our business too, just behind the scenes stuff. And have you even, yet to meet your mother? I'm dying to meet I know, your mother. We should, yeah, have, we should have her on the podcast. Yeah. Next time you guys come on, yeah, okay. Ingrid, you're more than welcome. Yeah. yeah. And you know, she'll just help us. Like I'll be so busy that I won't have time to like do anything with my personal life. And next thing I know, she's babysitting my cats and, yeah. um, you know, just <laughs> tying up loose ends for us. Tying, yeah, tying up loose ends all the time for well, us. Well, I can always imagine how what amazing people your parents are because they raised two Thank amazing you. people right here, but. 
you know, beyond that, they have to be super supportive because here you are. Okay. Nothing for nothing. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two young, beautiful girls, super intelligent student athletes. You guys have degrees from University of Miami in microbiology and something else. It's the degree is officially called microbiology and immunology. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) And now you're charter captains. Yes. Yeah. With the full unconditional love and support from your parents. Yeah. Yeah. They do a lot. And that's awesome. Yeah. To me. I mean, that's really great. I mean, it's so important to have a support system. Yeah. Because, I mean, I've met other parents and I've seen it happen to friends of mine to where they'll get like they try to follow their heart and do what they really love. But they got such groundwork laid for them by their parents that they get such pushback from their parents. It becomes super stressful Mm -hmm. and you accomplish nothing. Yeah. Yeah. No, I understand that. I mean, our parents have supported us. They were the ones that actually encouraged us to not go to medical school Mm -hmm. only because we... Both, well, we both knew we didn't want to go to medical school by our senior year of college, but, you know, having transferred and being student athletes, it was like, let's just finish the degree. Um, And after we graduated, all of our friends are going to vet school or med school or grad school, going to go get PhDs. And we were doing the same thing. I was like, I need to take the GRE or I need to do this. I need to do that. And my mom was like, and and my dad, they were like, well, but you've been so busy being a student athlete and doing school. Like, why don't you just like take a break and actually figure out what you like? Cause you've just been doing pole vaulting in school that like, what do you actually like and what do you want out of life? And they were the ones that were like, just get a normal job and the normal job ended up being fishing. So it's not really a right. normal job, but right. um, they encouraged us to take a step away from school. And I guess you could say like the corporate side of things and mm-hmm. you know, just do something a little bit different. They have a pretty instilled a pretty good base of faith base of faith in your lives too. I'm sure that's yeah. helped yeah. a lot with, with, had the comfort level of making those decisions and putting certain things in God's hands. and Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's really good. A huge part of our lives. Um, yeah, me too. Um, but, it's, you know, it's, it's good to see that it take its positive effects through you guys, and you know, which is phenomenal. It's admirable. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I know you guys speak a lot of um, the individual aspect of who you both are, but so much of what you guys do is together. Oh yeah. yeah. Right. So I always find it and for those of you who don't know, we, we do spend quite a bit of time together. Um, and I always just, it's, I laugh like when you guys finish each other's sentences yeah. and just like each other's thoughts and, you know, I don't know what, we're, we're, you know, being twins. Can you talk to how that, like, cause you guys have taken that and really owned it mm-hmm. like in, in like the best way. And it's great to see, but I mean, are there struggles behind it or are there, you know, is it, you know, more like outsiders looking in that have more of, do you understand what I'm trying to get at? Like, um, I mean, individual versus together and how people view you. And do you ever feel like, no, I'm me. You know what I mean? Not, it's not just the two of us. I, I don't, I don't think we feel that way. I think that growing up, we, you, when we were younger and even a little bit now, but not really, we would struggle with people being like comparing and obviously everybody's always going to be compared to somebody in their lives. But Mm -hmm. when you have an identical twin, that's basically the same as you, but very different at the same time. They'd be like, well, who's smarter? Who's faster? Who's, and we used to get things like, well, who's skinnier? Who's fatter? And like as kids, as kids, and we were, were, yeah, we were within pounds of each other all the time. We, and it doesn't, yeah, yeah, ounces. Like it doesn't even, it really doesn't phase us anymore. Mm -hmm. But sometimes like growing up, it was those kind of questions got old like to give a good example so we're both obviously pretty techie we have our youtube channel we edit all of our videos ourselves but amanda she picked it up probably one second faster than me she picks things up on the computer yeah so growing up i thought that i wasn't good at computers and she was right like i was the the computer twin and she and she actually took pottery so yeah she i was, was always the, like the more artistic twin, twin. Mm-hmm. but then in college i took an aptitude test and my number one well not just that but in high school you took a CAD a computer. I did computer aided design in high school for like three years, yeah. and by my senior year, I was like the teacher's TA, the mm-hmm. teacher's assistant. And then she and I took, took it, the class, and I did she really excelled. well. And the teacher was like, "You're good at this," but because she just kind of, I we just naturally made it her thing cause because we, I picked it up. We just had that. very few things that we separately did, so it was nice that she was techie and I got to do my art. But then in college, I took an aptitude test, and my number one score was computers. And I go to the the like 
counselor I was talking to, I, I was like, I had no idea. Like my sister's always a techie one. And she said, the problem is that you were comparing yourself to someone that was so good and you're really good at it, but she was like maybe this much faster at it or so she you, just yeah. grasped it a little bit quicker. Yeah, so it's probably something. You're measuring like nanometers. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I just assumed I was bad, but it turns out. Right. Yeah, but I'm she was good, good at, at pottery and I wasn't. I think one. That's true. Just, <laughs> like, I just wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> so just like you're, you're, they would just fold into like mush. No, I mean I made really cool she things. She doesn't really care about but it. I just my heart wasn't in it. Like, yeah. well, that's what I was gonna say. I think want and desire has a lot to do with yeah. being yeah. good at something like, yeah. too. I probably you know? could have been good, but like, and I and I took a pottery class in high school, and like I made like all sorts of stuff, but I just I didn't like it. I just I didn't like getting dirty, which is funny because I fish now. But yeah. I didn't like getting, like getting clay, clay under, under my nails, my nails. like stuff like I that. Loved, I loved pottery. But it's funny. Yeah. yeah, but no, I mean we've definitely being in business together. I think. We've had, there are struggles behind the scenes that people don't necessarily see just because you live together, you work together. But I also feel like our relationship is very, we're very, very close. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that, I think that's obvious. Think like if, if anyone spends any amount of time with you. Yeah. yeah. I think if anything, like we went to, um, we had actually very separate lives growing up at home. Like we had our own bedrooms, we had our own teachers, like our mom put us in separate classes. Mm -hmm. So we really only saw each other like after school in sports and with friends, but in school we were always separated. And then we went to college and we ended up being the same major, the same classes, the same sports, the same friends. And the only two people you knew in Louisiana were yourselves, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Right? Like so we got at least there? you guys had oh, each other yeah. up there. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we, you know? we didn't know And anybody. then I think Starting a business together, we've just spent so much time together that um, we've definitely had to like talk about our relationship and like you know work on things, but like not. It's just it exposed every like little weakness that you have in a relationship. Yeah, working together that's exposed what happened. It. Working together really exposed yeah. the weaknesses in our relationship and where we struggled, and um, we've had to like work on it. I mean, not like I mean we weren't gonna hate each other ever. We were, our relationship no. would never yeah. get to that point, but there were things that we had to just like. Talk about, you know. Yeah. yeah, get it out in the open. Yeah, yeah. Hey, we got to figure this out because yeah. yeah, that's cool. I mean, every brother and sister. I mean, I'm the youngest yeah. of six. Oh, yeah. So I mean, there's like a whole world of <laughs> yeah. you know, got to work it out there. Yeah, you know what I mean. We we all get along for the most part, you know. But you know, there's nuances that you know. And then you you know the interesting thing about being a member of six is that you know there's always like these little sidebars that you know one sister will said this and blah, 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 I can't believe they said this and, and then you got to be like do I choose a side here yeah because you know, yeah. you're both my sister yeah you know, and it's really tough you know sometimes and you're like well you do have a point you know what I mean yeah. but it's also kind of like well I don't want to trash talk her because I love her too and but it's like it's hard yeah yeah any I guess any dynamic but you know the, everyone's got their own journey and their own you know situation but I always think it's interesting though to hear that you know, with you guys, because every time I see you, you guys are always in lockstep. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm serious. Like, you guys are, like, you guys move as one unit. And yeah. it's oh, so yeah. cool to see. Um, I think, if anything, like, it would be things where, um, a good example to do, one of us would be quicker to do something mm -hmm. than the other, which didn't mean the other one was quick. And then it would be, like, like one of us would felt like, like, maybe, I don't, I can't think of an example at this point, but, like, maybe she would think about quicker, oh, what's our next YouTube video to upload? And I would think about it like maybe five minutes later, but then because she was always thinking about it first, I would feel like, oh, but I have to catch up. And then right. it would like create this, like we need to make sure we're having an open dialogue about things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I don't yeah. think that makes sense. Yeah, well, I mean, it does. I mean, yeah. we talked a little bit about this in Orlando um, when you guys went fishing at Disney, which yeah. I'm going to talk about in a second, um, but how you're more the serious when it comes to the business thing you know what I mean? you're more the hey let's try this i think i'm more with the, with the business and you're more like going. well we got to think about that other thing we we just talked about first and like make sure we like stay on point with our yeah, list i think i'm just very um i'm more assertive than i realized like well, starting a business together has I, even i've surprised myself at how like I guess assertive. Growing up, everybody said I was the aggressive twin. Yeah, because I'm just like more talkative, and and more, like vocal. more vocal, and like at a group party or something, she'd be much more involved. I'd be like mingling with somebody, and I would just before. be kind of on the side, hanging yeah. out with like the one person I know. Right. So we always thought she was the more aggressive, aggressive twin. Intro intro introverted, extroverted kind of. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And then I think starting a business, though, I found that I'm very. Um, 
on top of things. Aggressive. And I was I was more laid back, I think. Okay. Like more just like, well, let's see what happens and you know, um I mean we're literally nitpicking. We're this, like but talking yeah. sure, like you yeah. said, like nanometers yeah. of a difference. Okay. But if we had to pick, you know, she's definitely more you're just more like these are the steps we have to take. Mm-hmm. You don't go in you the order. Taking them right we now. We got to here. We can't go there and then go it's there. It's like we got one ABC, two, two ABC. ABC. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm more like, well, we could do one. Oh, but three is okay. But now we can do two. But we both still get it all done. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, when you wish upon a fish. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Joe took some great photos of you yeah, guys when you were there. Yeah. Um, and I got a chance to meet him too. Yeah. Really cool guy. Yeah. Um, tell me, I mean, I want to do that with the kids. Yeah, you definitely yeah. Like fishing at Disney. Disney I mean, how to have been so cool. Is, so we've done it twice now. Right. And we just did it when we were in Orlando for iCast. And fishing in Disney is like, it's magical because you don't even have to try. Right. And, you know, that's not exactly what fishing is supposed to be about. But there's a lot of action. There's a lot of action all day long. You're catching nice bass. They have big bass in the lake. You get to fish next to Cinderella's Castle. You get to fish under a monorail. Under a monorail, you can fish next to the Grand Floridian, and then you can also fish in Epcot, which we haven't done yet. Right. So when you fish in Disney, you can pick Magic Kingdom area or Epcot area because yeah. the lakes aren't connected. Mm-hmm. So apparently, it's two different lakes. Two different lakes. Yeah. Okay. You fish Epcot, you're. I didn't know that. Yeah. I thought, I thought yeah. it was no. actually connected. No. Yeah. When you fish Epcot, if you do, you do like the first chart of the morning, which looks like. I guess like now eight I'm thinking about it seven, logistically. Seven. That is a little bit off from the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. Right, yeah. That makes sense. And I guess all the like Epcot music goes on at the same time and like you're there when like Epcot opens and you can, and smell, you can smell when they all start the food cooking really from yeah. the different countries it's really cool yeah so you've never done it though we haven't done Epcot yeah. but Magic Kingdom we did the Magic Kingdom fishing twice and yeah. um we first we're time, uploading a YouTube video for that trip today yeah. it's going okay. up today the first time we fished so. in Magic Kingdom we fished with Tim and we met Joe and Joe's the director of the whole okay. bass fishing so then the second time we went, we said, we told Joe, we were like, you got to take us, though. Mm-hmm. Joe took us, and Joe's yeah. also a photographer. So that was kind of a bonus for us. We got some really, really cool, cool shots with the castle in the background. Yeah, yeah that's Holding cool. some bass. Yeah. Like, like, you know, you got Mickey Mouse. And our, our ultimate dream, so I don't know if you knew this, but Disney Cruise Line just came out with a Captain Mini. Yeah. So now they're going to have Captain Mini on the um, Disney cruises. Really? Yeah. And, um, she, you know, they're just trying to, you know, keep up with everything. And I think they said that she's going to be wearing, like, pants. Or a pants or a skirt, mm-hmm. right? But she's going to have pants in her wardrobe now. Yeah. Gotcha. And there's going to be Captain Minnie. And we're like, well, we need to go fishing with Captain Minnie. Yeah, you do. How yeah. do I get her on the boat? Like, awesome. come on. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I'm dying. I uh, talked to Joe about taking the kids there. Yeah. So I, th- I think I'd be a fool not to take them up on that. I yeah. would definitely do it. They'd yeah. have so much fun. So you guys go from Disney to catching Blue Marlin in the Bahamas or the other way around. But so this f- spring? I guess you guys fished in which tournament? Was it the oh, custom shootout? Oh, in the summer. Uh, we fished in the production, production versus custom, custom shootout. Production versus custom shootout. Just one of Skip's tournaments. Right. We fished on the cabana, and um, we caught a, uh, a few white marlin. Well, we caught No, we caught five. We would do a video on it. Five blue marlin. No, it was five marlin total. Oh, five marlin total, which is a lot. So I think it was four right. whites and a blue. It was four whites and a blue, and I caught the blue, and I caught a white, and I won top lady angler. Awesome. Yeah, Which was did. my first fishing award. You know, we're doing track. I was always getting worked awards. hard for it, but got awards and then fishing. <laughs> so proud. Yeah, we're so I proud was. Of you. I was like, it was really cool. We fished, fished on Cabana and they have a really good crew. Right. It was a Captain Eddie Wheeler. Captain right? Eddie Wheeler. And we yeah. had one their um, full time mate, Jose. Mm-hmm. And then um, they had hired on Topher for that trip as well. And he works on some other boats and he was there for the tournament. Right. And that was not your first time at the Abaco Beach Resort, obviously. No. Because yeah. Because of all the work we've, you've done with Skip previously. But. Was it cool to get back there again after? It was cool to go and not have to work. Well, I mean, right. we were working in the sense where we were fishing. So we, we were first, working. The first actually. time around, we were working the tournaments from a behind the scenes perspective. So answering all the radios, doing the live results. So that was really long days getting up before the boats went out. But and then going. you had to stand on the dock and just wave and the boats would leave. Right. That mm-hmm. was painful. Like, Bye. Yeah. Bye. Right. Okay. I guess I'll see you when you get back. And then the second time around, we got to go and actually be in the tournament competing and fishing. Yeah, because every time I go over there and when I do all the end of the artwork for like, yeah, you know, I probably have done artwork for oh, I know. every tournament over there that Skip puts on at some point or another. Yeah, and then when he flies me over and whatever, we hang out and have a good time. It's like you know, more often than not during the day, I'm 
going on the other side in Ireland when I'm going to catch bonefish. No, we've yeah, never done that. I know. I've never caught a bonefish. I know. We should go. Yeah. yeah. I'm serious. We'll yeah. make a special trip for it. Yeah. yeah. I'll go in a harpy. That's like my favorite thing okay. today. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've done all kinds of fishing, but I mean, to me, for some reason, I just have this love affair with, you know, catching a bonefish on the flats yeah. in the Bahamas. Yeah. It's like, it's just, it's like a religious moment to me. Yeah. Like yeah. it really is. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a phenomenal thing. Um, but I know what you're saying about being there basically for work and like just watching them to watch all the boats go and mm-hmm. you know so um, you guys had a good time catching the blues. Oh yeah, and, yeah. and the blues and blues the blue and, white. and, the, and blue the whites. And the whites yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, it was really. We good. were strategic about it too. Yeah, we we didn't. It actually worked out really well, but we went into it saying, obviously, like there's like, there can only be one top lady angler. Mm-hmm. And um, we didn't so want to interfere. you guys talked about this beforehand. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. We, we didn't want to <laughs> interfere. Like, let's say there, so was, there was another a- lady angler that was doing really well. And then if we were competing against each other, then we would rather have a Gale twin on the right. podium as opposed to no Gale Neither. twin. So when her and then the other lady angler started to get close in points, I kind of stepped back a little bit because it I said, okay, we next fish is going to win. Because mm-hmm. if I caught, basically, I caught a blue and this other girl, I think, caught three, three whites. whites. And right. points wise, I think she, she was, was being up. Yeah. She was up. And we said, well, if if Emily catches the next white, that means neither of us get it. But if I right. caught the next white, one of us would get right. it. So we kind of went into it with that mindset that, and if I didn't, I, did, I ended up catching the next white. And if I didn't catch that, another girl would have won. So, oh, yeah. So yeah. Nice you. yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it worked out. It ended up, I ended up, I was on the right rigor side anyways. And I, so it just happened that it way? It just happened right? that way, but okay. we went into it with the plan. Knowing that if I needed to step back, if, I would. Yeah. yeah. And next time, you know, it'll be your turn. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Lockstep, see? Yeah. Yeah. We've done that before, too, on boats where it's like, you know, you're not doing great during yeah. a tournament, but you know, like your junior yeah. is doing good. That if like that rod goes off, everyone's just like, all right. Grab it. That's Jonah's. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, do the, you know, and mm-hmm. so at least he can, we can get something out of the day. Yeah, you know? so exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, where do you guys see like all this heading, like ultimately, I mean, I know like maybe you don't need to have the ultimate plan right now. You just maybe just, you know, you're 24, just having fun now and just doing this now and like, just want to make something, make this established and that's cool. You know, cause there are people, you know, they always say youth is wasted on the young, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's a very, very true statement um, because hindsight's always 20, 20 and everything like that. But from my perspective, I'm, I wouldn't do it any other way other than, cause you guys are world travelers. I yeah. mean, you guys have been all over. Yeah. Um, you guys have been, been to Hawaii, Costa Rica, um, some really cool places, and your story isn't even written yet. Yeah. What do you want? You know, I think we've been, that's actually something, a question we've been, like, trying to tackle. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. it's a question you have to, like, digest and think about and, like, what do I see? What do I see myself five years from now? What does the business look like five years from now? So we've actually been talking about it a lot, and I wouldn't say we've made, like, leaps and bounds of progress on like exactly where we want to end up. But um, we have talked about the idea of having a fleet of charter boats. Um, We think that'd be something really cool. And um, I think being, I don't know, women and female charter boat owners, I actually get a lot of girls messaging me and saying like, oh, like I'd love to learn, you know? So I think I would have no problems wanting to train these girls. Like if they want to learn to fish and be a mate, like I would be totally comfortable training them as long as they want to put in the work. Mm Mm-hmm. You know. and we've also talked about the ideas of offering women's only like weekend camps type fishing where it's straight up teaching um, or even just recreational boating courses to women. Like because we've met women who they go out on the boat with their husbands all the time and they don't know how to dock the boat. And it's like it doesn't have to be pretty, but if something goes wrong, they need to know how to, how, how do to get it. home. And, right. you know, what if their husband has a heart attack or something and like you know like they have to know how to get home and dock the boat and we talked about like maybe we could offer like something like that where we take women yeah. out and just give them the basics you know because it's a very male-dominated industry and you know we're not um we're very what's the word pro like men and women like i'm not saying like it's got to be women like you know we're no, i don't for know sure. we're very inclusive like i'm you for know sure. and um that's why we like to do kids and families too but i mean we've talked about like having a fleet of charter boats you know we've talked about wanting to we definitely want to continue to grow our YouTube channel. I think um, filming and editing is like probably like my favorite hobby, you could say. Mm-hmm. Like we're just really into that. But we're definitely st- 
digesting that idea. Like, sure. Well, what? And you don't even need, yeah. you don't need to have all these answers. No, yeah, I know. I know. We're like, uh, <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. like, you know, yeah. you guys are doing great. I mean, you kidding me? Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm nanometering you right now for sure. Yeah. But, yeah. um, no, that's, I mean, you talked a little bit just now about, um, being inclusive, not yeah. necessarily being like pro women or, or yeah. whatever yeah. like that, which I think that's a pretty good word. Yeah. Because at the studio, we kind of take the same perspective where we're just kind of like all inclusive. Yeah. Not necessarily like pro man or pro woman. Right. You know what I mean? Because I, th- I kind of see it as like even just in life in general, just, I just wish we all just live in a world that's completely, you know, colorblind necessarily. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just yeah. like, okay, we don't even need to be even talking about it. You yeah. Know, I don't really care who you are. You know, are you cool? You take care of your business? All right. That's all we, that's all we worried about. But you are right in saying that this is a male dominated industry yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. But in recent years in the advent of social media and stuff like that, that's kind of like changing a little bit mm-hmm. or becoming more inclusive. Yeah. Which I, I think is the ideal word for that because, you know, we've talked about this before too, but we're seeing my daughter just like totally looks up to you guys. Uh-huh. Like, you know, you guys are like yeah. the ultimate role models for my daughter and you have to have that same kind of effect on other girls out there um, right now. Um, and you probably will, ongoing as your empire expands <laughs> you know um so I, I think that's really another great thing about you guys um because you do it right you know and you keep your heads screwed on right and um you know i just want to say if there is a young girl out there watching this podcast today or listening to this podcast today like these you are watching the right people Oh, okay. thank to, you. You're to, like giving me goosebumps. Yeah, over to, try, to try to emulate. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. Hey, it's true. I mean, yeah. listen, that's why we asked you to become part of our team. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Because, you know, right away, I was super impressed with you guys. And you guys have heard me say this before. I'm just saying this for the audience now. You know, super impressed with you guys right off the bat. You know, not only, I mean, your parents did a phenomenal job with you guys. I mean, and, you know, you, and it's not just them, but you guys have done mm-hmm. most of the work yourselves. But, you know, it's, you know, in an industry, you guys are tackling something that a lot of people may not see. They may just see like, oh, they're student athletes in pre-med and what are they doing fishing now? Yeah, you know? yeah, but, we get that. But it's not an easy thing oh, yeah. what you guys are doing right now. Yeah, it's definitely been an uphill battle sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, even with me, you know, it's like I paint fish for a living and I can paint, you know, whatever I want, really. Mm-hmm. You know, I, it's not just because I can only yeah. paint fish that this is why I paint fish for a living. I mean, I'm an artist for the U.S. Mint. Right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so that's, that's, that's like all yeah. inclusive yeah. to, you know, to whatever. Everything. But, you know, it is a very interesting industry um, and that I find highly compelling um, and highly competitive in a positive way. Um, some people take it in a negative way. I choose not to. So it's really admirable because you guys are following your heart and truly doing what you love, right? And... To me, that is what Connected by Water is all about. Yeah. The whole theory behind Connected by Water is all about. It's about staying true to yourself, not because you guys are gorgeous yeah. and you could easily take that other path. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no problem. Yeah. But you don't. No, you yeah. choose to rise above, take the high road, do things your own way. And I love that. Thank love that about you guys. Don't ever change. Thank you. Keep on keeping on. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're right? not yet. Yeah, I know. So I know the best is yet to come. Um, I want to really thank you guys for coming on today. Thank, thank you for having yeah. us. We had no, a great time. I, mean, I know we've talked a long time about building this whole podcast and getting yeah. it going. I said, when we build it, you guys are going to be like some, one of the first ones on. And today's the day. It finally yeah. happened. So it. Yeah. we're super excited that you guys came in. Um, I'm sure this won't be the last time you guys are coming on the podcast, yeah. you know, and well, definitely won't be the last time that we're doing stuff together. So yeah. Emily Gale, Amanda Gale, Captain Emily Gale, Captain Amanda yeah. Thank you very much for coming Thank on. Thank you for having so, us. All right. Connected by Water. Check them out at Gale Force Twins. Twins. Right? That's the new at. Yeah. At Gale Force Twins. Right? No awesome. more at Captain Amanda Gale. No more ca- at Captain yeah. Emily Gale. Yeah. We're going to go. Yeah. Galeforcefishing.com will also have. Galeforcefishing.com is our website. And then at Gale Force Twins is our social media. All right. And then dfreel.com slash team slash Gale Force Twins. Unless you want your. We're going to do the We're one. We're going to do one. Get We're first do the one. Yeah. All right, cool. John, John, how we doing? Doing good. good. Doing good. All right, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye.